All right, guys, so I just received shipment of my, one of my most anticipated tools ever, a milling machine right here. Um, and we're going to unpackage it. I just kind of started on the unwrapping, but let's get this unpackaged and maybe even set up today. All right, it has been uh, several days. Um, it's started cooling off a lot more, hence the jacket. Um, my control board up here, uh, back on the inside, seems to have blown up. So I am being shipped a new one. That one should be here tomorrow. In the meantime, today I'm going to work on getting this wax gunk off and then getting the vise on, tramming that. I'm gonna borrow a tramming setup. I'm not entirely sure what it's called, dial indicators, whatever, from my friend Robert, um, Outlaw Custom Knives. Check him out on Instagram. He does really cool stuff. Um, once I've gotten all this off, like I said, I'll be doing the vise, and I should be, I guess, going and picking up that tramming tool later, so I'm just going to show you taking this stuff off. Getting this vise squared up. I've got it to the point where um, I'm getting about maybe half a thousandth difference between measuring on this side and then this side. Tracking it all along, I'm getting mm, about the same just across the face of this. And I think that's about as tight as I can get with this setup and my skill level. I'm not entirely sure how to do this, as this is my first time doing anything uh, this precise, 
but um, this should be good enough until I start making folders. Um, we should be fine just doing fixed blades. This is more than precise, I know that half a thousandth is perfectly, um, perfectly precise for making fixed blades. So that is that and it is looking good. All right, so I did get everything about as trammed as I think I can do. Um, I might have my friend Robert come over and help me. Um, he's better at it than me and he used to have this same mill so he knows how to do it. Anyway, I got the old base plate motor um, control panel hanging here. I've got the new one, um, so we're going to switch that out and see if it runs. Here we go, moment of truth. Hopefully, I've only got one screw holding on both. Uh, it should be fine. We're just going to turn it on. Hopefully it runs. It at least lights up now, so that's good. Forward. And nothing is happening. Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to hopefully figure this out. All right, so uh, Precision Matthews, after the control board did not work, they sent me a new uh, tachometer and potentiometer, and now it runs, but it does not uh, track RPM, so they are now sending me a new um, RPM reader, and I'll have to put that in, and I'll update you when that gets here. Okay, so... Um, I've got it a bit taken apart now. I got a new um, magnetic speedometer or whatever it's called for measuring the RPM. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it is now uh, working. However, I'm having the problem where I have to get this th up through this little hole in the side of the control box, and then if we come under here, out this hole, back down through here, up through there somehow, and then up through here, whoops, up out of this hole here behind the digital uh, quill readout and then it goes onto a bracket and touches on the drive, like the shaft there. So uh, here we go and I'm gonna hopefully be able to do that, but that is seeming pretty complicated without like taking this whole box off. So we will see. I did get it. That was kind of ridiculous. Just trying to pass it through this, this, and then down a hole that's like literally right next to it. I absolutely could not do it without taking off the entire box. I had to take off the control board because to get the box off, you have to have screws that are here and here, which are covered by the control board when it's in. Um, so, now, hopefully, it should, once I've got this all put back together, it should work. I did actually test it, just holding it up, and it does actually make the tachometer, or the potentiometer, whatever, whichever one it is, it does actually work. So, now I just need to get it all put back together. All right, so I couldn't fit this um, all up through there but I 
was able to splice the wires. Um, now I've got heat shrink and let me just shrink that. I'm just gonna use a torch. I don't have my heat gun with me. Well, I do, but it's you know a little ways away. So this will work just fine. Just doing it real quickly. Perfect. So now I will mount it up in the bracket, which is here. Mounts in this little bracket. Um, and then on those two bolts there and measures on the shaft right up there. All right, so it is fully working. I can, oh, it's already on. Turn it on. It's in the high range right now, um, but it is spinning. And I mean, it was already spinning. I've been working with it for like a week and a half. Um, so it's a little dirty and whatnot, but that, so it has been working, but now it is actually reading RPM, which will be pretty useful at times. I haven't like needed it yet to read RPM, but, um, okay, there it turned off. Yeah, so that is awesome. That is my new mill. I've got my stickers from Blade West, um, everything. We also got a shop kitten because we've had mice, actually two of them. The other one's oh, right there. So. Yeah, that's the mill. So pretty much the whole reason that I bought this mill is so that I can make folding knives, which I believe, yes, I've got the prototype. It's just a G10 prototype, but a prototype for size, scale um, of this knife. And I will be making these and selling them Check out my Instagram, it should be around here or so. Um, hopefully I will have more uploads in the future. I've been just super busy. Also kind of lazy about uploads, sorry about that. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this hassle of a video getting this thing set up. Now it's finally all working and I am more than pleased with it. It is a great machine. Um, it's not Precision Matthew's fault. It was just something went wrong and they were extremely good with their customer service. So anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.